how time flies one year has already passed since october 7 but wounds remain wrong on that day a hamas attack on gaza strip killed more than 1100 1, people including 10 nepali students and saw the capture of 250 people including a young Nepali student, Bipin Joshi. The status of Joshi, among many other captives, remains unknown to the state. The Israel-Hamas war in the Middle East has only widened and deepened since then, with lasting and devastating consequences. The toll includes the loss of more than 11,000 human lives, mainly in southern Lebanon, with the intensification of Israel's operation against Hezbollah. Even as a tennis piece holds in the larger Middle East, despite a widening war and a deepening humanitarian crisis, Latest developments like increasing hostilities between Israel and Iran and Israel's raids on the basis of the United Nations interim force in Lebanon, popularly known as UNIFIL, offer a hapless humanity caught in wars and conflicts around the world, little respite. For reports, five peacekeepers of the 9,500 strong UNIFIL have sustained injuries in recent attacks after Israel's announcement of what it calls limited incursions into the war-torn country, that is Lebanon. For those who have forgotten the significance of UNIFIL, a reminder. The force was created in March 1978 to conform Israeli withdrawal from Lebanon, restore international peace and security, and assist the Lebanese government in restoring its effective authority in the area. These raids, which come barely a year after the loss of <clears throat> 10 Nepali lives in the Hamas attack and the disappearance of a student should ring alarm bells for our government. This is because Nepal as a significant contributor to the United Nations global peacekeeping missions has troops deployed also under the umbrella of UNIFIL since its founding days, since the founding days of the UNIFIL. What's more, a widening war should be a matter of serious concern for Nepal as the Middle East is home to a sizable number of Nepali migrant workers. The safety and security of these workers should be a topmost priority for a government wearing that federal, secular, democratic tag. Needless to say, a full-blown crisis in the Middle East will have severe ramifications for an economy that remains afloat on remittances. As a founder member of the non-aligned movement, as an abode of peace, and a member of the United Nations, this Shangri-La has some international obligations as well. As the birthplace of Gautam Buddha and several other enlightened beings that have led humanity toward kindly light from darkness, toward knowledge from toward knowledge and wisdom from ignorance, 
Nepal should lead an international appeal requesting the warring parties not to target the keepers of a fragile global peace and not to have peace in, the, in their crosshairs. This is because wars offer no solution to daunting problems facing the world. As Bertrand Russell says, war doesn't determine who is right, only who is left. Our holy scriptures, like the Beth, sing the glory of peace and the virtue of living together in perfect harmony with fellow humans and nature. A heavy responsibility, therefore, lies with the current administration ruling this spiritual land of multiple faiths like Kirat, Buddhism, Hinduism, Saibism, Boon and Animism to take some firm steps for global peace by seeking to bring all warring sides together in the sacred land of Lumbini. How about taking diplomatic initiatives for hosting a global peace summit in Lumbini, the birthplace of the Buddha and other enlightened be beings to begin with? For a government caught in a perpetual geopolitical and geostrategic bind as if its internal contradictions were not enough, this may be asking for too much, but diplomacy is the art of the impossible and impossible is nothing, right? Time has come for Nepal to practice some really serious, some really imaginative and innovative diplomacy, something it has not done for decades. Let Vijaya Dasami, which marks the victory of good over evil, inspire us all to end this madness called war once and for all. Let peace prevail on earth and in high heavens. With this, I wrap up this edition of Soft Talk. I request you to subscribe to this channel, comment on our presentation and press that like button. Your support means an awful lot to us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.